That guillotine didn't stand a chance. You know why? Cause I'm the drill master. <laughs> So I'm going to an 18th century ball this October and I need something to put in my hair. One of the most recognizable images of the 18th century is this, la coiffure à l'indépendance, a giant wooden ship towering over a giant cluster of hair. These hairstyles were expressions of patriotism and political engagement. But feminine presenting people of the late 18th century were not truncating themselves to only giant wooden ships in their giant coiffures. Oh no, my friends. These 18th century poofs, as they were called, could feature all sorts of crazy accoutrements, from giant golden serpents to an entire vegetable garden, including carrots, artichokes, and radishes. You can thank Marie Antoinette for that one. <gasps> Mon dieu! So instead of a tiny ship, I want to make a tiny working guillotine. Why, you may ask? Because my ball gown is going to be an 18th century version of Disney's The Queen of Hearts. And you know what she yells all the time? And you know what she'd use to chop off people's heads in the 18th century? A guillotine. Hello, my name is Jackie and I have a sick, twisted sense of humor. Not only are we going to build this sucker today, but we're also going to answer an age old question I've been asking since the dawn of time. How the heck do they keep it on their heads? Now we are only going to be making the guillotine itself today. The poof which goes underneath the guillotine and on top of the coiffure, I'm gonna hold off on making until I finish my gown because I want it to actually match my gown. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you wanna see me make the poof and the whole Queen of Hearts cosplay, which is going to be an Italian gown period appropriate for the late 1770s with some very fun, very fancy details. And maybe a flamingo walking stick if I have time. Slight trigger note for anyone who knows construction at all. I have zero official terminology for anything construction related. I'm completely out of my skill set here. Please be nice to me in the comments. You will need a lot of supplies for this, but hopefully most of them you will already have in your home. Some square dowels. I got two of these multi-size packs from Michaels. A razor saw or another type of small saw. Something to help you cut angles like this saw thingy, super glue or other appropriate glue for wood, an exacto knife, some polymer clay or something else to make a blade, rope or string, a drill, and some wire. I have here on my head a giant ski slope hair cushion. Now my hair is not quite long enough to get it up in the back, which is why I haven't even bothered. This is just precariously pinned on my head, but I need to have it on my head and I have my hair out of my face so I can figure out how tall I'm gonna make this guillotine. So I have my big chunky dowel. I am going to go to the mirror and figure out how tall I want it. And also with this on my head, how deep the center cushion is so that I have a measurement for the weight that's gonna help keep this thing on my head. Okay, let's go. Here's the length I decided on. I measured it and it's like six and a quarter inches, so I went ahead and made it an even seven. Then I marked it on the other big dowel from the second pack. The depth of the cushion is just under four inches. Here's my cute little razor saw assembled together. Don't forget, safety first, folks. We're going to be using the straight cutting guide first. Place your dowel against the edge of the saw finger. Then use the little black doohickeys and place them into the holes closest to your wood. This helps keep them steady. This box thing is made for larger pieces, so it's still kind of loose, but it does help a little bit. Then saw, fiend, saw, saw for your life. <laughs> Once both were cut, I toyed around with how wide I wanted to make it and decided two inches looked good. So I took one of the leftover dowel bits and measured the length for the top. Then I did some more sawing. This particular size dowel is just a little too chonky for this saw, but oh well, it worked.
The sides of the guillotine need to have a track for the blade to go up and down on. Grab some popsicle sticks and cut off the curved bits. Then carefully with your X-Acto knife, slice them in half-ish. I needed four in total to create a track on each side. To make the tracks, measure the width of your dowel and divide by three. Then draw your lines out as guides for your sticks. Because this wood is cheap hobby wood, it'll bond with super glue, which I like because I have a decent supply of it handy. Glue the tracks onto your sides, making sure you turn the straight outer edges of the popsicle sticks in toward each other and leave the edges you cut facing the outside so your tracks are straight. Choose a drill bit that's slightly larger than your chosen string to drill the hole in the top of the guillotine. Then mark the exact center of your top piece. Now my friends, it is tool time. Power tool time. That was extremely satisfying. Then it was time to glue the frame together. I'm a very impatient person and hate sitting here waiting for the glue to tack, but alas, tis the only way to stick. Next, we need to make the little legs. Cut a 45 degree angle on the end of one of the smaller dowels. Place this down onto your surface and line it up against the side of the guillotine until it sits evenly. Then draw your line. Line up your mark with a 45 degree angle spot on your guide thingy and saw your heart out. These were much easier to get through. Cut six of these total. Oh my God, they're so eggly and cute. Like most things, however, the smaller and cuter the object, the more evil it is. Commence the epic battle to get the legs to stick. And I mean epic. So I started with super glue and for the most part that worked for the first two sides. But it's this back one that's starting to cause issues. Can you see how enthused I am? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Hey, anything you can do to keep your sanity while sitting there waiting for glue to dry. Okay, let's try this again. This time I decided to sand the two surfaces first, which definitely helped. Now there's a trick to getting these legs on. Add your glue and wait a couple of minutes for it to get tacky. Then place the bottom of the leg flat onto your surface and kind of scoop into the frame and then up until it sits flush. Then wait for it to bond. Now that the legs are glued on, for now, it was time to move on. I sanded down one bit of popsicle stick to serve as the wooden part of the blade. It's sticking a little, so I sanded it down some more. Now to make the table. Uh, where's my ski slope? Where is it? Where did it go? right next to you, dumbass. I fiddled around for a while to see where I wanted it to rest on my head and then adjusted until I came up with a length I liked. Then I marked my dowel and prepped for sanding. Two dowels for the table. To make the rest of the table, I lined up the sides onto the guillotine frame and marked each side. Then I measured the distance to get the width of the front part of the table. We'll cut two of these. The next day. It was time to assemble the table frame. So while I glue this together, I've got a fun little story for you. So last night I finished filming adding the two little legs and I took my old phone, which is what I'm still using to film on for now, and moved all of my files over to my computer. It took a long time because the files were large. As soon as it moved over, the files disappeared. I had a heart attack. <laughs> so I spent three and a half hours yesterday frantically trying to recover these files. I downloaded a bunch of like file recovery programs and waited and waited and sifted through all of these files on my SIM card. And I'm not kidding you when I said every single thing that I have filmed up to this point was on my phone and was thought lost. I didn't know 
what I was going to do, how I was going to show you all what I had done in the beginning of this project. Because it's woodworking and not sewing, it wasn't like I could just go back and refilm it. I have, you know, limited supplies. So I came up with the idea that I was going to do an interpretive dance. I was desperate, y'all. <laughs> so at about 10.30 last night, I had my computer up and I was staring at it, wondering what the heck I was gonna do because the files got stuck. And I looked out of my videos folder and I had just pasted them outside of the videos folder instead of inside the videos folder. I'm such an idiot sometimes. <laughs> However, I thought that maybe some of you, not all of you, but some of you might enjoy actually seeing me do an interpretive dance about how I built the frame of this guillotine. So if you stick with me till the end of the video, after the reveal, I'm gonna do just that. All right, let's get back to gluing this together. Once that bit and my hair was dry, it was time to glue the other side of the table. If this looks like really dull work and a lot of just sitting around waiting for glue to dry, that's because it is. And since it really doesn't make for very riveting content, let's move on. Let's make the guillotine blade. I rolled out some polymer clay. This is sparkly and pink, but I bought it because it was on clearance. Once it was rolled to the thickness I wanted, I used my popsicle stick as a guide to cut out the shape. Ta-da! Oven time! Then I measured the height of the table to make the legs, er, I mean, drumsticks. I thought and was correct in thinking that the table would be stabler if I made a middle support beam between the legs and the bottom. Commence more sitting around waiting for glue to dry. Stupid me for thinking I could do this thing in one day. Okay, I had to think today and believe I have come up with a better idea for keeping the guillotine perched comfortably and safely on top of my giant poof. Originally, I was going to put in a center dowel that goes down into the cushion to secure it and then put barrettes, and I could not figure out a way to do that at all. So I have a different idea. We're gonna try it out. However, if I cannot drill correctly, firstly, I'm gonna have to come up with a different idea and secondly, I might completely destroy everything I've done so far. Wish me luck, y'all. I'm gonna need it. Well, it worked. That guillotine didn't stand a chance. You know why? Cause I'm the drill master. <laughs> Before dealing with the headpiece, however, we needed to get the table attached to the guillotine. This is the hardest part and by far the thing I struggled with the most, even over the leg saga, which off camera continues to be a problem. It's a really awkward spot to hold without crushing the entire structure. I tried hot glue after the super glue didn't work, but as I was doing that, the legs fell off of the other side of the table. I drilled very carefully using a small bit into the joint of the legs. Then I took a nail from my picture hanging kit and stuck it into the joint. I cut off the excess using heavy duty snipper -roos. I'll then stick the nails in using super glue for a stronger bond. This is the last thing I want to do, but I'm resorting to using wood glue to attach the table to the frame. The problem with wood glue is that it needs to be clamped for half an hour. The clamps I have are too small to fit on this project, so I resorted to sitting there being a human clamp for about 20 minutes because that's as long as I could stand. I ended up using a bookend on one side of the table because my hands were really hurting. Will it stick? Will it stick? Oh my god, it sticks! Ow. Oh, look.
look at past Jackie. Look at her showing off the table like, look, it's glued, it's great. Nothing is going to go wrong now. I cut a bunch of slats for the table out of some of my remaining popsicle sticks. These are going to get glued to the top, or will once we paint them. Okay, now that we are together, we can add my clever new idea for keeping this thing on my head. I'm going to use some millinery wire and glue it into the holes where I drilled earlier. Then I'll make little loops at the end, and I can then pin it to my hair, and maybe even tuck it into the hair piece. I'm going to have two in the back and one here at the center front. That should be enough to keep it secure. And with it being millinery wire, it will bend to suit my hairstyle to keep the wire hidden. What do you think? Is my idea for pinning this on my poof a good one? Let me know in the comments below if you would do it differently. Marie Antoinette, Jackie here. I just want to say that in the process of putting the millinery wire on the underside of the guillotine, the entire table came off the guillotine frame. And after a full night of trying to get it to stick back on with various glues, I ended up having to put nails in it like I did with the front of the table. First, the blade. I'm using some basic silver acrylic paint for this. It's gonna take a few coats. I tried to use some wood stain I had in my stash for the painting, but it's taking really long to dry, and most of the table portion is going to be covered up by the slats, so I switched to some old brown paint that's kind of on its last leg, like this guillotine. It matches pretty well with the stain, so I'll also use it to go back and touch up the spots on the guillotine where the stain just didn't stick. I covered the cut edges of the wire with hot glue to protect my noggin. Then I'll paint it over the wire using the same acrylic paint. It's pretty close to the color of my hair too, so I think it'll camouflage nicely. We're getting close, folks. Just a few things left to do. The thing that holds the head during shoppage, 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 shoppage. Anyway, the thing that holds the head during shoppage is called a lunette in French, which means little moon. Oh, it's so cute. It's also the modern French word for glasses. Fun fact. I made this out of the same polymer clay I used to make the blade out of. Once it was baked, I painted it in the same dark brown tone as the rest of the guillotine. My idea for the pool of the guillotine is to do it with wire. I super glued the end of the wire to the blade. Once that was dry, I wrapped it around the width of the blade a couple of times and then made a little loop in the center for the rope. Then I just glued it to a wooden slat. Speaking of slats, let's finish that table. Woohoo! Go Jax! Off camera, because it was my first time ever, I made a jump ring and hook out of wire. This is for the rope. I then made two little wire eyes that will serve as guides for the rope instead of trying to work out a pulley system. Here's all the wireage glued to the guillotine. I used hot glue and then covered over it with paint. Not the neatest job, but nobody's going to be looking that close. Then some hot glue to attach the new net. Here's the finished blade, which looks mighty neat if I do say so myself. Last final thing to do is string up the blade. I tied some cotton yarn around the blade. Then I used a needle to thread it up through the hole and down the wire guides. Then let her rip, let her. It doesn't chop. Are you effing kidding me? I've spent the last two days trying to troubleshoot this blade situation. I've done all sorts of things. First, I tried making the hole bigger in the top of the guillotine. That seemed to help a little bit. I also widened the wooden part of the blade. I shortened the wooden part of the blade. And no matter what I did, the blade was falling out of the channel every time I tried to pull it up or put it down, or it was getting stuck. So then I tried to add another layer of popsicle stick on the channel portion of the frame, thinking that part of the reason why it wasn't staying was that the channel wasn't deep enough to hold the wood. And I do think that was also part of the problem. However, it is now Sunday. I have to finish this project today. As a maker, there's a point in the project where you just have to admit that good enough is good enough and that you're never going to get it perfect. If you've ever felt this way or you've ever needed to hear this, let me know in the comments below. I'm really happy with the way it looks. And even if it doesn't drop as well as I'd like, it still moves and it still works. In addition, I have four months 
to figure out what the problem is. So I'm calling it. If I do figure out in the future what the problem is, I will go ahead and pin a comment in this video so you can check back and see what my solution is. Now I will say that this was a challenge for me. There's only one other woodworking project I've ever done and that was just to build a basic picture frame. So to go in and make an entire model of a guillotine with almost no experience is a pretty big deal and it's a pretty big win for me and I'm, I'm excited about it. I definitely think it's a little bit more Halloween than <laughs> it probably should be given that it's going to be on top of my hair as a queen, but it was always is going to be Halloween in my head. I just, that's how I function. So I'm okay with it being a little wibbly wobbly, you know? <laughs> and now when I'm not wearing it on my head, I can use it in my Halloween decorations. So it's a multitasker, even better. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to stay tuned for the interpretive dance at the end of this. And if you've ever had to waste an entire evening on something that you didn't plan because something went wrong or because you made one stupid mistake, please consider visiting my Ko-fi page. It is linked down in the description below where you can leave me a one-time tip. All contributions go towards helping me buy supplies. For example, buying a real camera instead of trying to film on a phone that's half broken and becoming more fiddly and more sensitive as time goes on. I'm almost there. Y'all mean so much to me. I'm so happy that you're here and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. It's about to get very silly. Bye y'all. Thanks for watching. with her head! Off with her head! Off with her head!